W. W. Prescott, 1895, The Sanctuary and its Services. As our attention is called from week to week in our Sabbath school lessons to the subject of the sanctuary, it seems a fitting time to dwell upon this theme that, while it is thus in our minds, we may get all the help possible from the subject. The special lesson which we should learn will be this. What God did in type in the earthly sanctuary, he did in fact in the person of Jesus Christ, the representative of humanity, in order that God in Christ might do in fact in believers what he did in type in the sanctuary. The very first idea suggested in the erection of the sanctuary was that God might have a dwelling place. And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them. Exodus 25, 8. And this dwelling place was to be made by the people. That is to say, there is suggested in this very first thought the idea that divinity and humanity meet in the tabernacle. The people were to make the tabernacle. God was to dwell in it. But in Christ, as set forth in 2 Corinthians 5.19, we have the same idea. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. As God directed the people to build a sanctuary that he might dwell among them, so the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And God provided for himself a dwelling place in humanity. And as he revealed himself to his people then in the sanctuary, so he revealed himself again to the world in Jesus Christ. But God was with Christ and in Christ, in order that God with Christ and God in Christ might be God with us and God in us. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Matthew 1.23 But as Christ is but a manifestation of God to the world, it is the same idea. The central thought of the gospel and of Christian life and experience is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Taken from a sermon preached on January 12, 1895 in Battle Creek. Now the only thing toward which the sanctuary service pointed and the lesson which it taught at all time, all the time, was freedom from sin, forgiveness, cleansing, atonement, separation from sin. When an individual is separated from his sin, then he becomes like Christ. And Christ was simply the manifestation of the character of God. But the special work that goes forward at this time and the work which has given rise to this people is the work set forth particularly in the 14th chapter of the book Revelation and is familiarly spoken of as the three messages. But the result of that work and the work that is to be completed just before Christ comes because I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man the very next thing is the coming of Christ. The work which is aimed at in, the, in these three messages is stated in verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. When that is true, then the earthly temple has again been cleansed and sanctification is complete then that people are ready for the coming of Christ. But here are they that keep the commandments of God, and God's true Sabbath is the seal and the very keystone of those commandments. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and the faith of Jesus. But there is nothing in the sanctuary service unless it be brought, unless it be through faith in Jesus, and that for forgiveness, remission of sin, atonement, reconciliation and sanctification. Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. 
Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. These two texts go together. When the people of that time really carried out that instruction of the scripture to keep the Sabbath and to reverence the sanctuary, it could only be through an inward work wrought in them by the power of God unto sanctification. So now the people of whom it can really be said as it will be said, as it is God's design that it shall be said, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That can be done only through an inward work, wrought in the heart by the power of God in Jesus Christ. And when that work is really done, sanctification is complete. And the very next thing is the Son of Man coming to gather his own. So what was taught then in the instruction concerning the sanctuary is taught us in the three messages. And the completed result is to be the same in both cases, atonement, reconciliation, cleansing, a readiness for the Lord. Does it appear to you from these scriptures that from this particular phase of this question we may learn something of God's purpose concerning us and something of what he designed to teach in the sanctuary? And shall we say that the earthly sanctuary having passed away is of no special interest or importance to us now because we have Christ? But notice how God does his work. He first preached Christ in the sanctuary, a great object lesson. Then he preached Christ in the flesh, a life presenting before men under the very circumstances under which they lived, the very ideas preached in the sanctuary service, freedom from sin and cleansing. Then God preaches to all the same gospel in his word and he has given to us the record of what he taught them in the sanctuary service in order that we might better understand and appreciate the life of Christ and the work of Christ and in order that we might cooperate with God in the development of his plan of salvation just as understandingly step by step as the Israelites could cooperate with their high priest in the sanctuary as he conducted his service.